Damage has definitely been done to South Africa and its economy by the downgrade by SNP. With us in the studio today, we have the director of URSA, the executive director of URSA, Renette Talyard. Welcome, Renette. Thank you very much. Renette, damage has definitely been done to South Africa and its economy by the recent downgrades. And seemingly now, we find politicians, the president even, scrambling to plug the holes, um, the economic holes, the financial holes, all the holes. What do you make of this? No rating downgrade is a positive development. Whether you're Argentina, South Africa, Brazil, Russia, a rating downgrade is not a positive development. I think that it, in some aspects, could have been worse if we had exited the World Bond Index, which we did not do courtesy of Moody's reserving, in essence, their position until they see the budget in February 2018. Mm. So even though the consequences were devastating in principle, it could have been even worse. So we have, in essence, a bit of a stay of execution to see what will happen in the budget next year. And that's where the pressure points will really coalesce. But it now seems to be a scrambling to find the money. What are we going to do with taxes? What are we going to do with savings plans? Where are we going to find the money? Where are we going to find the money? Where are we likely to find it? I think it's not only about where are we going to find the money. I think it's looking holistically at the fiscal framework that was tabled when the medium-term budget policy was tabled and understanding that those trade-offs were made more stark, but the decisions were not necessarily made as aggressively as they should be made. So I think what one can clearly see is an increase in the pressure around those decision-making points. Additional pressure points have arisen. The, the desire of the presidency to include free higher education, all these pressure points are building into decision-making mode for the February 2018 budget and to prioritize. The danger, though, is, and the potential negative consequence is, you will have pressure to cut spending and you will equally have pressure to hike taxes. We see that already today in the reportage of the responses to the rating downgrade. And that could have a negative and dampening impact on growth. And that's what we would have to watch very carefully so that where we cut and where we increase taxes, we do it in such a way that we try and mitigate the negative implications for growth because our growth is already low, sluggish, it's not job creating growth. So we need to be very careful in striking those balances. What are we looking at in terms of financial impact around the outcome of the ANC elective conference? Uh, not necessarily on which political candidate, candidate triumphs, but what is the outside world looking at in terms of policy statements, in terms of how the, whether the ANC elective conference even happens, who wins it? You know, what is the outside world looking at for us in terms of financial and economy? Well, I think the outside world is looking not only at December, but also beyond December. I think there's this fallacy that December is going to be the culmination moment of many, many decisions. In an essence it is, but it is also only the beginning of a possible further policy pronouncement on the 8th of January. I think what has always traditionally happened, those of, those of us who watch this extensively, whether from a private sector or public sector perspective, you have the conference, then you have the January the 8th statement. The international investment community will be looking as much at the conference as it will at the actual January the 8th statement for specific policy pronouncements on what is to be done in the South African economy. I think one of the interesting developments is also that former President Khalema Motlante has come out with a review panel's report for Parliament on whether or not we've seen an impact of all the different legislative initiatives and the activities South Africa has engaged as a country to ensure that we see a more stable, inclusive economy. And some of the conclusions of that panel are a stark reminder of how far we need to go on growth and the nature of that growth and how inclusive that growth needs to be. So what we will clearly see is an international investment community to try, uh, trying to see whether a party is going to grapple with those policy positions or whether it's simply going to be a situation of candidate contestation without it necessarily being pivoted and focused on the policy discourse of where the country is. Thank you, Renette. We will keep a close eye on this and hopefully we'll get you back in studio to give us some more insight. Thank you so much.